Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln on this Sunday morning. My name is Skylar Geary Zink and I'm a worship associate with the church. We're joined today in this video by members of the staff of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Our membership and admin coordinator Kelly Ross is hosting the call and coordinating this technology. Bob Fusen, Jean Helms, and Chelsea Kropka are here with greetings, music, and support. And several of us are present in the chat room running beside this YouTube video on Sunday morning. We also have lay pastoral care folks on the call this morning. If you need someone to talk to, reach out and we will get you in contact with one of them. We're still practicing this new way of being together. And while it is a time of anxiety, there is also possibility. We're going to all learn a lot, fast, about how to be a church together and apart. Much has changed in the last month, but what has not changed is the vision that we have. The Unitarian Church of Lincoln aspires to be a loving community, uniting reason with spiritual exploration to transform ourselves and the world. We have a big vision here, and we know that creating a loving community begins with welcome. So whether this is your first time joining this community or your 500th, if you have stumbled onto this YouTube video by accident, or if you are a longtime member trying to figure out how to log on, if you came here hopeful or heartbroken, whatever your age, gender, skin color, whomever you love, you are welcome with us. More than ever, it is important that we share the warmth, love, and light of this place. So my ask to you is simple. Do not keep this church, this community, a hidden gem. Invite people to come. We have this service on Sunday morning, Zoom Vespers on Thursday night, interviews and daily updates on YouTube, connection groups for members, talent shows, and music. Join us. As we enter into worship, take a moment to center yourself. Wherever you are, find a comfortable place with your body. Take a few deep breaths and let us begin. Our chalice lighting this morning, the words are by Andrew Pakula. In sightless night, terrors draw near, nameless fears of talon and tooth. Hopelessness yawns before us, an abyss, alone and unknown in the gloom, longing for the dawn. O oh, sacred flame blaze forth, wisdom brought to life. Guide us with the light of hope, the warmth of love, the beacon of purpose and meaning. Because we are all afraid of the dark, let there be light. Our first hymn this morning is number 298, Wake Now My Senses.
Before the world changed, I had one question. When are we ever not busy? We're busy working the nine to five, busy at home, busy volunteering, busy shopping, busy on social media. We're busy taking the kids to school, picking the kids up from school, taking the kids to extracurriculars, picking the kids up from extracurriculars. We're busy meal prepping or cooking dinner or too busy to cook dinner and instead running through the fast food line even though it would have taken about the same amount of time because look how long the line is. We are so busy and exhausted to the point that the word busy hardly means anything anymore. It is a constant state of being from the second we wake up in the morning to the second we fall asleep and maybe nagging us even in our dreams. You need to do this or that. You don't have enough time. If only you worked a little harder, you wouldn't be so damn busy all the time. Maybe when I retire, I won't be so busy. But honestly, we know we only become busier when we retire, somehow. And for some people, they wear the badge of busy with pride. How are you? I'm busy. I'm important. I have people to meet, places to go, and things to do. But the more busy you take on, you may realize you're becoming a pack animal and the busyness is a burden on your shoulders. Sometimes I feel like I'm more of a human doing rather than a human being. Why is it so difficult to be still? Almost everything in the way we choose to live our lives takes us away from ourselves. These constant distractions of being too busy, noises, stress, emotions, stimulating food and drink, preparing for the next activity, the internet, divisiveness in society, fear, anxiety, and this way of life, this overstimulation then becomes our daily lived experience, which we in turn perceive as normal when it absolutely is not normal, and yet we allow it to perpetuate. We perpetuate it ourselves, whether we aren't valuing our time or ourselves enough, we let these distractions rule our lives. We're bustling back and forth until we're nauseous and have a headache and just want to rest. What does it mean to be still in the chaos of our modern world? This was my question before. Then the world changed. For some of us, the endless stream of busyness seemed to cease. But for others, we somehow became more busy. My heart goes out to parents of children when they're working from home and also now schooling their children. There's always more work to do, especially when there are more people in need. And even when our lives are physically less busy, now a new busyness is taking hold. One in our minds and our hearts. Fear. Fear at what is our new normal and the future of our world and our place in it. Fear of not knowing. In the words of Leon Brown, the answers you seek never come when the mind is busy. They come when the mind is still. Stillness, by its dictionary definition, is the absence of movement or sound. Our modern word comes from the Middle English word stillness via the Old English stillness with one L, meaning silence, absence of noise or disturbance, tranquility, quietness, and absence of movement. The root derives from the Old English still, derived and related to the Old German stilli, meaning to be fixed, to stand. It is also related to the classical Greek word stele, which means a post. Stillness is not simply the absence of motion or sound. Stillness as a spiritual practice is much more. Stillness is an energetic quality of being. It is at the heart of every person, whether we are connected to it or not. Stillness is being rooted, being grounded in who we are, fixing to our very core, our values, 
our mission, our decisions, and our responses to stimulus. To be still in activity is to let life flow around us in a simple rhythm. And stillness is also time we make for ourselves to quiet our mind and simply do nothing. Reading is called Meditation on Letting Go by Carol Allman Morton. Many of us carry a burden of worry, anxiety over the state of the world, worries about money, about our environment, our families, about peace and justice. May we trust that nothing will get worse for us putting that burden down for a moment. May we let go of what weighs us down. May we find that we can set down worry for a longer and longer periods of time. In our experience of letting go, may we be open to the possibility that we need not pick our worries back up. May we find passion and strength to work for change where we have the power to do so and to let go where we do not. If not forever, let us put down any worries or anxiety for our time of quiet. May we be in quiet together. I invite you to take a deep breath with me before we go into the next poem. I'm sharing a poem by Cameron Wiggins Bellum called A Prayer for Uncertain Times. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home, remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips Remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen and blessed be. As this next hymn plays, please share in the chat box your name or the name of someone whom you are holding in joy or sorrow, or you may choose to hold those joys and sorrows in your heart. Know that we are connected, even though we are physically distant.
That was beautiful. That was the song, or hymn, 352, Find a Stillness, sung by the First Unitarian Universalist Society of San Francisco. The second reading is called Controlling Chaos, and the words are by Barbara Merritt. My husband, the physics teacher, receives a weekly magazine called Science News. A recent cover story in bold letters riveted my attention and I snatched it. Controlling chaos. Now that's a practical theology. My hope soared here in concise scientific prose was the potential solution to my checkbook, my desk, my attic, my basement, my schedule, and possibly the junk drawer in my kitchen. I took notes as I eagerly read the text. It said, just as small disturbances can radically alter a chaotic system's behavior, have the author's children also been sick? Tiny adjustments can also stabilize its behavior. Tiny adjustments? Why didn't I think of that? What tiny adjustments? I read further. The success of this strategy for controlling chaos hinges on the fact that the apparent randomness of the chaotic system is really only skin deep. Is the scientific community sure about this? Have they ever seen my desk or my toy room? Beneath this chaotic unpredictability hides an intricate but highly ordered structure. This is obviously not obvious to the casual observer of my life. This is akin to balancing a ball on a saddle. The ball won't roll off the saddle's raised front or back, but continual adjustments are needed to back it into its position as it begins rolling off the sides. Continual adjustments. Now I'm beginning to think, think scientifically. What continual adjustments, though? We don't avoid the chaos. We stay in the chaotic region. Yes, do that. You don't have to have a deep theoretical understanding of what's going on. All you need to know in effect is the shape of the saddle. Shape, all I need to understand is the shape of my chaos. What shape? And then, Eureka! The author writes that the way to keep chaos under control is by a constant stream of nudges. Aha! I now have scientific proof that my intuitive reaction to chaos works. Nudge it. Don't disturb or organize it. Nudge it. 
the article has a very upbeat ending. It claims that chaos is not something to be avoided due to the flexible and dynamic nature of chaos, chaos may offer a great advantage. I breathlessly await further scientific breakthroughs in this area. Meanwhile, I think I'll go nudge a few papers on my desk. So why should we be still? And do we even have time to try to be still? Ancient wisdom and holy texts point to the importance of this practice, and we may think about it intuitively. Uh, well, that makes sense. Like, we should be still occasionally in our life, sometimes, not just when we're asleep. In Taoism, the concept of Wu Wei describes a state of doing without doing, to ride the wave and be at peace with inaction through action. Lao Tzu explains, be still. Stillness reveals the secrets of eternity. Returning to the source is stillness, which is the way of nature. The way of nature is unchanging. Knowing constancy is insight. To the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. In the Bible, it states, be still and know that I am God. And we know meditation is a foundational practice in Buddhism and Hinduism. In particular, meditation is a way to strengthen mindfulness. Through meditation, the Buddha achieved enlightenment. There are many more reasons to be still for a few moments each day. You may want to maintain perspective. If you don't make time to be still, then you may find yourself constantly reactive influenced by many voices with big demands on your time and your values, reactive to fear about an environment we have little to no control over. You may want to stay connected to your true self. You may want to ensure you are living your values. Stillness often reveals to us if we are on the right path. If the image we present to the world is an accurate reflection of our own true selves, you may want to reflect on gratitude. Stillness has the unique quality of helping us realize that we can be thankful for very many things in this world. When we are at peace, we remain rooted through action, whether it is our own action or whether the environment around us is changing. Rather than being reactive, we are responsive. Our self, our core, our post, remains unaffected by any movement. Action like the depth of the ocean unaffected by its waves. But we are also not resistant to motion. Stillness as a spiritual practice isn't just about being physically still. It's about being emotionally still during a storm of busy or emotional turmoil. It's about prioritizing some actions over others and in the face of adversity, maintaining composure. We can connect with this inner stillness by simply doing nothing. We can learn so much about ourselves by doing nothing for 5, 10, even 15 minutes a day. I mean really do nothing. Not praying, not problem solving, definitely not planning but actually being still and quieting the mind and simply being. Doing nothing may be the most productive activity we can do each day. This is meditation, but sometimes the word meditation sounds a little overwhelming. You can call it meditation. You can call it quiet time. Simply all you need to do is exist, to be still for just a few moments. Do nothing every day. After all, in the wise words of Winnie the Pooh, people say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. And of course, doing nothing often leads to the very best of something. Schedule a time for stillness. Find or make a space where you can be still. 
relax your body. Either sit with your eyes closed or watch natural motion like the wind in the trees, fire from a candle or running water. Play nature sounds if that helps you. Quiet your mind. Your mind has a lot of thoughts to share with you. Be respectful and patient with yourself and understand you will probably run through many of these thoughts, often all at once. If you have a random thought or try to make plans, give yourself grace. You can make non-judgmental observations. When you start to tell a story or dwell on these thoughts, emotions, simply let that thought go. Let them float by like clouds. Be present. In this moment, you are here. Not regretting the past, not fearing the present, not even dreaming of the future. This is the only time you have to just be. If you recall a moment of peace in your life, you may want to return there to that moment of peacefulness. So, I invite you to be still for a moment with me now. Take a moment, close your eyes, and take a few deep breaths with me. Thank you for your presence. I'm sitting outside and it just started to rain during that last moment there together. Um, a couple of announcements as we move to a close of our time together. Next week, you will receive your newsletter electronically. You don't wanna miss a welcome from our new board president and results from the voting last Sunday. If you are not receiving the daily e-blast and monthly newsletter, you can sign up at our website, www.unitarianlincoln.org. The link is in the chat box. And as this last song plays, please think about giving a small contribution to the collection plate. Just text UC Lincoln space and the amount to the number 73256. This information is also in the chat box. Thank you. Closing words this morning are by Eric Williams. Blessed is the path. Blessed is the path on which you travel. 
Blessed is the body that carries you upon it. Blessed is your heart that has heard the call. Blessed is your mind that discerns the way. Blessed is the gift that you will receive by going. Truly blessed is the gift that you will become on the journey. May you go forth in peace. And as I extinguish the light, let you carry that light in you this week, in all that you do, in stillness and in busy. Find stillness through the busy and be at peace.